This is how Will Calhoun uses electronic drums. What's up? My name is Justin. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things e-drum related. Hope you're having an awesome day. In this video, we're covering Will's drum set. He's got a lot of interesting pieces of electronic gear and pedals and samples and a lot of crazy stuff. We've covered a lot of cool other drummers in this series as well. So if you want to go check out those videos, I'll link them down in the description below. He's got lots of different drum sets you know, spanning decades and decades of music. When he's playing jazz stuff, he doesn't use e-drums at all, just pure acoustic elements. When he switches over to playing rock music, like with his band Living Color, he incorporates a lot of electronic elements. The way he describes it, his work desk is bigger when he's playing with that band. When he's playing with them, he's using MIDI, triggering samples. Everything's tied to a MIDI clock, that way the reverbs and delays that the band uses can work across the tempos of, of the different songs and stuff. One thing you'll learn about Will right away is that he loves to experiment with lots of different drum sounds. A regular e-drum pad with built-in sounds just won't do the trick. So one consistent thing that you'll see across all of his drum pads is that it, they allow him to bend, shape, or load in his own sounds and just create whatever he wants with them. There was a pretty obscure 1989 interview that I'll link below if you want to go watch the full thing. But he was talking about using a drum cap pad at that time. And this is it right here. Before that, he said he was using a Roland Octopad, but switched over to the drum cap pad because you get up to three sounds per zone and there are 10 of those zones instead of the eight zones on the Roland Octopad. And you can switch between kits on the drum cap by hitting a pad or controlling it with foot switches. And he actually kept his foot switches next to his hi-hat. That drum cap pad ran to an S1000 sampler where he had samples of horn hits, orchestra hits, a speech, voice samples, and he had plans of using piano samples, his drum solos at the time of that interview. In that interview, he also mentioned that he had a Roland R8 synth explorer as well. But apparently he didn't swear off Roland altogether because eventually he started using the Roland SPD-S pad. If you don't know what that pad is, it's the precursor to the modern Roland SPD-SX pad that's really popular right now and you've seen a lot in this series. But one of his favorite pads has got to be the Korg Wave Drum. You've seen him use it time and time again in a bunch of different photos over a bunch of different years. Uh, there's like two or three variants of the current version right now. I'm talking about the older toilet bowl looking version. Those suckers are going for $3,000 on reverb right now. Like they're incredibly expensive if you buy one of those older ones but he loads lots of samples into it, and he usually hides some sort of module underneath of it that he controls. He has the module, that loads all the samples into it, and he plays with a combination of sticks and hands. It's a favorite of his for using with solos. He also has a Digitech whammy pedal that he uses to pitch bend while he's doing those solos. And he has a crap ton of pedals. The only drummer I've seen that has a full out pedal board worth of gear for solos. He even has a looper. I should probably also mention that he doesn't just use the older version of the Cork Wave Drum. In this photo right here, you can see he's using the newer version about middle left of that photo and the older version in the bottom left of that photo. If you want to hear more about the Korg Wave Drum, his thoughts on it, and the state of electronic drums back in 2013, I'll link a cool article in the description below. So moving over to the acoustic drums, you're probably wondering if he's ever used triggers. And the answer is yes. I've seen a couple of different ones. The one I could recognize was this. It's the Roland RT-10S, and it's really not that expensive. You can find this for like 30 or 50 bucks used on eBay right now. And I've seen him use this on his snare. I haven't really seen him use any triggers on his toms or his kick drum, but I could be wrong. I could have just missed it, but mostly whenever he's using a trigger, it's on his snare drum. Moving over to the far right side of the drum set, you'll see that sometimes he has a Mandela pad. Now, Danny Carey also uses this. Actually, both of their sets are a little bit similar because both of these guys use the old style Korg wave drum. Both of them are using a Mandela pad sometimes. Uh, Danny Carey goes way overboard and uses like seven or eight of them. This guy only has one of them sometimes. If you want a more in-depth idea of what that pad can do, go watch my video on Danny Carey's drum set. But basically, you can do a lot of crazy stuff with it. It's a MIDI rubber pad with tons of zones and a lot of options for fading in between those zones. It's really cool, go check it out. So switching over to his drum throne for a second, it looks like sometimes he's used a Porter and Davis monitor system. Now that's not technically an electronic drum element, but it's really good for electronic drums because you don't get that tactic feedback from electronic drums. You don't get this sound wave smacking you upside the head when you're playing an electronic drum set. So it's a good element to have. And if you're unaware of the Porter and Davis name, you'll probably recognize like the Pearl 
throne thumper or something like the butt kicker. It's the same idea. Basically, you have this little box that shakes your drum throne in sync with you know how you're playing and how the rest of the band is playing. The next pad I want to talk about is called Jam Cat from the company Alternate Mode. It's an electronic hand percussion pad with a really funky zone design. It kind of looks like an alien skeleton rib cage or something. Instead of piezos, it uses FSR. It's a different triggering method. You can pitch bend, pan, play chords on the darn thing. It's an absolute beast. In the right hands, you can achieve some really interesting and weird results from it, as you can see in some of the videos I'll be linking down in the description below. In the video, you'll see that he's plugged it into a DITI interface, and then from the interface, you can plug it into your laptop and trigger sounds from your laptop. So you gotta buy the DITI interface with the jam cat to get them both working together. He gets some really weird, crazy results out of this thing. Make sure you go watch his Drumeo video after you watch this one because it's a really interesting solo with some really crazy sounds. And again, he's using this in combination with the Korg Wave Drum and they've got this weird chemistry together. And again, with all those different foot pedals that he's using with the Korg Wave Drum. So that's the overview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. By the way, his band Living Color actually just dropped an album called Shade came out this year if you want to go check it out. It's definitely worth a listen. I actually listened to it while writing the script of this video. If there's any gear that I missed in this video, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you in a few.